hello students so in our today's video we are going to start with a uh, we are continue our point that's a gastrulation as you know the blastula get formed this blastula having inner cell mass and which is surrounded by the trophoblast cells and now then the implantation happens and afterwards the gastrulation in which the exactly the germ layers get formed and extra embryonic membranes get formed right so gastrulation is a stage in which the uh, three germ layers from which the th three germ layers get formed and the um, outer extra embryonic membranes are also get formed so we get up to the formation of uh as you know uh the formation of the uh, yolk sac as well as the uh, amnion how it get formed it having a outermost layer as you know so just recall the previous video okay so these are the trophoblastic cells and in a trophoblastic cell here is the yolk sac get formed as you know this is the yolk sac hmm? and just above to it it's a amniotic sac or amnion is formed and here are the our epiblast cells and a hypoblast cells are the three okay epiblast cells and below to it these are the hypoblast cells these are the hypoblast cells and this is the yolk sac okay this is the yolk sac this is amnion amniotic cavity cavity okay now the next point from this hypoblast cell the extra embryonic mesoderm is formed or synthesized here is the extra embryonic mesoderm gets synthesized now okay as you know this is the endoderm endoderm here is the ectoderm ectoderm hmm? now i am saying it is as a extra embryonic mesoderm extra embryonic mesoderm hmm. that means as you know this extra embryonic mesoderm is not exactly the mesoderm which is which is from the embryo right so especially the mesoderm which is formed exactly from the embryo it is from this hypoblast cells okay which then further on forming the mesoderm right so extra embryonic mesoderm also get formed around this okay this is the trophoblast layer these are the trophoblast cells and it having the amniotic cavity then uh, bilaminar embryonal disc then the yolk sac bilaminar embryonal disc which is having these cells are called as which are below called as a hypoblast cell okay and this is the yes epiblast cell okay so just recall the pre previous video okay we have seen up to this now further on what happens during the gastrulation the formation of primitive stick okay how it get formed primitive stick formation so this structure gets hmm, slightly become a tubular structure now this becomes slightly tubular okay what the change happened just see this structure become a tubular one so i am showing it as a tubular structure now this trophoblast which is present at the outer side it is forming the chorion it is forming the chorion the chorion is the outermost extra embryonic membrane which is formed very first time okay among the extra embryonic membranes so this is the trophoblast exactly it is made from the trophoblast cells hmm? 
So this is the outermost layer. We can say it as a yes chorion. Hmm? This is the chorion. Then the next one. So this is the chorion. Now it is called as a chorion, right? Then it becomes slightly stretching. Uh, then it encloses. This is the just pink color I will show. Pink color. This is the amniotic cavity. Very good. Then below to it, there is a yes, there is a yolk sac. So this is the yolk sac, right? And in between them, there is the two type of cells. One is the these below are the hypoblast cells, and above to this, these are the epiblast cells. These are the epiblast cells. Clear. Yeah. So just what the structural change happened? Yeah, this whole assembly become tubular, slightly become tubular. Okay. And it having this extra embryonal mesoderm, right? It having the extra embryonal mesoderm. This extra embryonal mesoderm forms extra embryonic coelom. How it get formed? Just within this. Look, look at here. Okay, a cavity appears. A cavity appears around this hole. Okay, a cavity appears. Okay, so First of all, how it begins? Suppose this is the extra embryonic measurement, right? Around the all. Okay. First of all, then a cavity appears within it. A cavity appears within it and which runs from here to here. And uh, okay, so this is the, I'm having attachment at here. This is the site from where the class interview is, yeah? So, this cavity is called as extra embryonic coelom. This cavity is now called as a extra embryonic coelom. So, just what the change happened? This is the extra embryonic embryonic coelom. Okay, this is the extra embryonic coelom. How it get forms? The mesoderm, the extra embryonic mesoderms. Okay, within it, a cavity get appeared and two layers uh, get formed. Okay, which are forming the cavity. It is called as extra embryonic coelom. Okay, now here is the extra embryonic coelom from here. Uh, and especially, so these are the I will name it. These are the epiblasts. Epiblast. This is the hypoblast. Hypoblast. Then this is the amniotic cavity. This is the yolk sac, right? This is the yolk sac. This is the outermost is the chorion, right? Then the next one, extra embryonic coelom, right? Further on, the formation of primitive state. This was the fourth, fourth point, and now the fifth point is the formation of primitive state. Formation of primitive state. Primitive state. So, how the primitive state get formed, right? So primitive stick formation, especially formation of primitive stick, how it get formed. So there are just a invasion occurs, invasion occurs to this layer, okay, and the formation took place. Uh, formation of primitive stick took place. So I am just showing this. This is the amnion, amniotic cavity. As you know, okay, below it, it's a, it having, below it, it having the, the another layer is called as a, another cavity is called as a yolk sac. So everyone is clear. This is the yolk sac. Understood? This is the, yes, everyone, this is amniotic cavity. 
This is the amniotic cavity. And here are the these two bilaminal discs is there, having two type of cells. The yes, below these are the hypoblast cell, and the above it is the having epiblast cells. Yeah. So above to it, these are the epiblast cells. This is the epiblast cell. Okay. So, so what happened to form during primitive stick formation? Okay, as you know, this layer, this layer is forming the ectoderm. Ectoderm. Okay. As you know, this layer is forming the endoderm. Okay. To this side further on, there is a formation of, here is the formation of, uh, just these cells start dividing to form, okay? These cells start dividing to form a mesoderm. These are forming the mesoderm. So, mesoderm here. Mesoderm is at here. Okay. No, now, how the primitive state get formed? A slight inversion occurs to this region. Okay, inward pull. They are moving just a notch appears at this side. Okay, a notch appears at this side. Okay, and it goes, start to go deep and deep. It starts to go deep and deep from all this side. So it encloses all this. This is the endoderm, mesoderm. And from here the, yes, from here the ectoderm also. Okay, just a slight invasion occurs to this to form a primitive state. To form a primitive state. Which goes deep and deep. Which goes deep and deep and forms a structure called as a primitive state. So formation of primitive state is a characteristic feature of the chordate. During embryonal development, the primitive stick formation is the characteristic feature of the chordate. So in our book, they haven't mentioned in detail how the primitive stick develops and formed. Okay, so we will just focus on it that a slight invasion occurs, a deep depression occurs at this site and this ectodermal, mesodermal and endodermal cells, okay, embryonal germinal cells which goes inside to form a primitive state, okay, like this way. Hmm? And it's having outer its covering, okay, along with its outer covering. So, further on, how the development occurs, okay, the next one. This invasion goes deep and deep, then the formation of. So, this all clear to you? Okay, further on, I'm showing the diagram, next one to you in front of you for more clearance what happens during that. Hmm? So the outermost covering is called as a chorion. As here, you know, this is the outermost covering called as a chorion, which is derived from the trophoblast, right? These, this one is a chorion. Okay. Just within it, there is a then the another one is the amnion. Look there. Okay. Then the next one is the amnion. This one is the amnion. Okay. This amnion encloses. This is the amnion. The outermost is a chorion. Then just inside it, there is a amnion, amniotic cavity. The amniotic cavity contains, it contains a embryo. It contains a embryo. So, so this is the embryo. Just I'm showing like this, right? Just I'm shedding it. So this shedded part is the embryo, and this embryo encloses it having a cavity called as primitive gut. So this cavity is called as a primitive gut. This is the primitive gut. 
Okay, so this outermost covering, this outermost is called as a, yes, this is the chorion. This is the amnion. Okay, this is the embryo. Embryo, right? Then, the next one, from the embryo, from the primitive gut, the from the primitive gut, there is an, the arrival of endoderm. From the primitive gut, the endoderm is arising. So this is the endoderm. This is the endoderm, right? Because as you know, this primitive gut is also the lining of the primitive gut is made up of a endoderm. And just it is derived, okay, from this. And here is the yolk sac. This one is the yolk sac. Yolk sac. Okay. Then. This endoderm is further on forming allantois. It, it is forming the allantois. This endoderm, which is extension of the primitive gut. So especially extension of the primitive gut is called as the allantois. This is the allantois, right? The role of allantois is hmm, in the formation of blood vessels during placenta formation. Okay, this allantois is forming the blood vessels. Blood vessels during placenta formation. During placenta formation. Okay, this is the role of this. Okay, as you know, okay, so this is the amniotic cavity, this is the yolk sac, this is the embryo, and uh, this embryo, firstly, it is forming a primitive gut, and this gut is made up of an endoderm and which is extended out. This extended region of the endoderm is called as a allantois. Clear, everyone? Hmm. Then the next one. This, uh, especially during embryonal development, well, what is the role of uh, this yolk sac doesn't show any significant role. But at embryonal de development, at very first time, this embryo sac, em yolk sac is responsible for RBC formation during fetal condition. It is responsible for RBC formation during fetal condition. As you know, as in a human, in human, the placenta, as the embryo get formed, okay, the placenta is, uh, from the placenta, the nourishment is uh, taken. So, yolk sac is performing the duty of formation of RBC during the fetal condition. And further on, the uh, liver and spleen takes, uh, takes place and afterwards, the liver and spleen start to form RBC. Okay. Then the next one uh, is, so the placenta formation took place from this chorion, chorionic villi get formed. I'm just showing here the chorionic villus. Okay. These are all around, uh, right around to this. These are the chorionic villus. I'm just representing here. These are the chorionic wheels. Okay. So, so exactly formation of primitive stick and the formation of embryo. Look. Hmm? So focus on it. Hmm? As the invasion of this, as the invasion of this, hmm, the primitive gut get formed. Primitive gut get formed and around to it, the endoderm get formed, right? Endoderm forms a 
structure which is forming a primitive gut and having the extension that means during this uh, uh, rearrangement a formation of primitive stick what happens the allantois get formed from the endoderm firstly uh, at very first time firstly what which layer get formed extra embryonic membrane that a chorion that's a chorion which is derived from the trophoblast at its outer side and the mesoderm at its inner side okay so chorion uh, for neat you can ask uh, the question can be asked the, from which the trophoblast is uh, the chorion is made up of so chorion which having outermost side it having a trophoblast cell and extra embryonic mesoderm from its inner side from its outer to its outer it having trophoblast chorion consists of two layer outer side it having a trophoblast and from its inner side it having to its inner it having extra embryonic mesoderm extra embryonic mesoderm so this is very important one this is important in case of your neat as well as cd so chorion is made up of outer trophoblast inner extra embryonic mesoderm then what about the amnion the amnion is made up of outer side it having which is just opposite to it to its outer side to the outer side it have it is made up of extra embryonic to its outer side it having if this is the inner layer this is the inner layer of the chorion so this is the extra embryonic mesoderm so outer side of the amnion is having yes it having extra embryonic mesoderm mesoderm and to its inner side inner side inner side of the amnion it is made up of the inner side of the amnion it is made up of the trophoblast inner side it is made up of a trophoblast are you getting the point yes everyone how then the question arise in your mind how the amnion is made up of the trophoblast we have studied in our previous video how the amnion get formed yes amnion is formed from the amniogenic cells these amniogenic cells are derived from yes these are derived from the trophoblast itself so the cells which are forming the inner side of the amnion these are the Yes, trophoblastic cell. Clear, everyone. So this, these two extra embryonic membrane, you are you are getting the point. One is the chorion. Chorion is the outermost extra embryonic uh, membrane, and it is firstly formed. Then the amnion. Then the allantois. Okay. So what is the role of this amnion? Amnion provides an amnion contains a cavity called as amniotic cavity. This is the amniotic cavity. and this amniotic cavity is filled with the amniotic fluid and this amniotic fluid is secreted by this developing embryo which secretes a fluid called as amniotic fluid okay and this fluid provide nourishment okay this uh, fluid provide nourishment to this embryo okay uh, as well as uh, this amnion especially used to detect a Uh, as you know amniocentesis during the technique of amniocentesis this amniotic fluid is taken out this amniotic fluid contains of uh, some cells of this embryo okay so it is derived or formed from the the amniotic fluid is formed from the developing embryo uh, we synthesize this and contains some cells hmm? and during amnio amniocentesis it is taken out with the help of syringe and uh, uh, it is observed hmm? Uh, to uh, detect any abnormality 
और जेनेटिक डिफेक्ट कैन बी डिटेक्टेड एज वेल एज द मिस यूज इज ऑल्सो डन बाय डूइंग एम्योसेंथेसिस दैट वाज द फर्स्ट सेक्स डिटरमिनेशन आल्सो ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द एम्ब्रियो राइट देन द नेक्स्ट वन अनदर एक्स्ट्रा एम्ब्रियोनिक मेम्ब्रेन दैट इज अलोंटोइस दिस अलोंटोइस इज एक्सटेंशन फ्रॉम द ऑफ द प्रिमिटिव गट ओके Uh, primitive gut get extended. That means it is from the endoderm, formed from the endoderm, and this endoderm, okay, uh, yeah, this part is called as a allantois, and this allantois is responsible for uh, blood vessel uh, formation. Okay, uh, clear. So uh, this allantois is responsible for formation of blood vessel during placenta. Okay. Okay. Then further on, the yolk sac. The yolk sac is not doing any significant role in the development of the embryo, but during fetal condition, it is known to be an an um, organ for the formation of RBC during embryonic development. Okay. Uh, the RBC are formed from the yolk sac. Clear, okay, everyone. Okay. So uh, and further on from the chorion. the chorionic villus get formed this chorionic villus is used for the placenta formation okay uh, this chorionic villi are present all over all over okay uh, around to all this then the faith of uh, faith of this membrane extra embryonic mesoderm uh, we have studied now we are turning towards the faith map uh, there are three germ layers as you know now we are dealing with a faith map and further we will study the placenta formation and further on okay faith map so what this faith map is so uh, during embryonic development itself during embryonic development there are three germ layers get formed and these three germ layers are germ layers these are three the first one is the ectoderm then mesoderm then the endoderm okay so during embryonic development from from this three germ layers the future organs get formed and that is defined or that is decided in embryonic development itself okay so the first one during embryonic development the first uh, the ecto from the ectoderm which organs get formed from the ectoderm the here then brain uh nervous system especially it contains brain and spinal cord brain as well as spinal cord are derived from this whole nervous system is ectodermal in origin then skin then retina of the eye especially the retina of the eye and anal canal and we can only okay. okay so these are derived these organs are derived from the ectoderm then the next one from the mesoderm which organs get formed mesoderm especially bones muscles then heart and circulatory system heart and circulatory system then the urethra 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 then the next one is the adrenal cortex adrenal gland ka cortex okay these are derived from the mesoderm yeah then 
bones are mesodermal our muscles are mesodermal heart is also mesodermal urethra and adrenal cortex right then the from the endoderm which organs get formed from the endoderm uh, gastrointestinal tract gid gastrointestinal tract get formed then stomach lining inner lining as well as stomach lining g inner lining of the stomach then the pancreas the question can be asked on it right uh, then small and large intestine large intestine lungs liver gall bladder these are formed from the endoderm clear so from the endoderm which organs get formed gid tract especially the gid tract stomach inner lining of the stomach then pancreas small and large intestine lungs liver and no, gall bladder get formed so these these are from these are the feet map hmm? and uh, these are these are the organs from from this germ layers okay uh in every uh, organs physiology when we are studying any organs physiology uh, one point is there the embryonic uh, after location location of organ we study the formation from which germ layer it is derived okay so it is it is pre decided during embryonal development and that is called as a phase map clear everyone okay now we are turning towards the placenta formation so this chart is very important right and uh, the question can be asked from for mcq as well as single sentence hmm? can be can be asked from that chart so study with uh, study properly right then the placenta formation now we are turning towards the next point is the placenta formation okay placenta it provide nourishment to the developing embryo okay and it is formed from the cornea okay it is formed from the chorionic villi get formed and from which the placenta get formed okay so we are turning towards the placenta formation now uh, so This is the endometrium. Okay, this is the endometrium I'm showing, right? So this is the stratum functionalis, and uh, below it is the stratum basalis. Okay, which is which is present at the or forming the basement membrane, right? Then during placenta formation, what happens? Uh, all this assembly, the chorion. We will study about this. during implantation what happened i am drawing this trophoblastic layer this is the trophoblastic layer here this is the trophoblast during placenta formation as you know this trophoblast is called as this trophoblast is derived or divided into two cytotrophoblast and a syn cytotrophoblast right so the cytotrophoblast this is the cytotrophoblast right now hmm? and uh, the embryonal lob site at the site of embryonal lob site this embryonal lob site uh, this these trophoblastic cells has an ability of attachment to the endometrial wall has an ability to attach with the endometrial wall right 
So what happened during this? The sin cycle of protoplast cells get formed. As you know, sin cycle of protoplast means what? Or cells which are multinucleated cells. These are getting formed around this sin cycle of protoplast get formed. This sin cycle of protoplastic cells divide, digest this endometrium. It digests this endometrium and enters inside, okay, and try to implant it. During implantation, we have studied. Okay, so this is the, yes, this is the cytotropoblastic cell. Okay, then during this, further on, here is the formation of, these are the villus. These are the villi. Okay. Villi get formed. This villi here is. Here is the blood, maternal blood flow. Okay, this is the maternal blood flow, right? So this villus grows further on, moves further on, and breaks this blood vessels, break it. It breaks this. And then here the space get formed, called as a lacuna. Here it forms a lacuna of space. Lacuna get formed. I'm just showing it here. Okay. So look. How this happens? Since I do a trophoblast, sorry, cytotrophoblast. Okay. From here, here are the blood vessels. This is the maternal arteriole. Okay, and this is the maternal venue. Clear. Yeah. Okay. So I'm what I am showing. This is the uterine. Uh, this whole assembly it is present in a uter uterine wall, right? Here is the uterine wall. This is happening at here, uterine wall. So here, especially at this side, the chorionic villus get formed. The chorionic villus get formed. This chorionic villus goes, goes up and up, and they tries to, and they try to rupture this, and they succeed in rupturing. They get rupturing this, okay, and they are forming a here. They are forming the lacuna. All this is happening around. So these are the lacuna. The lacuna get formed all around. Just I will show all this. So all the scenario will be clear in your mind. So this is the sin cytotropoblast and the sin cytotropoblastic cells are uh, and uh, here is the blood vessels hmm? and these are the lacuna, the space. How it is formed I am just explain, explaining you further on. So these are interconnected with each other. These lacuna are interconnected with each other from lacunal system. Okay, these are forming the lacunal system. Yeah. Okay. These are interconnected. These are interconnected. Rounded structure or even structure. Okay, these lacuna are interconnected with each other. And around it, there is a network of blood vessels. Yes, I'm showing the network of blood vessels. This is the maternal blood vessel, right? Blood vessels. These are the maternal blood vessels. So what happened? Just look at here. Okay. 
maternal artery wall right so this is the maternal venue clear so okay and this is the endometrial wall this is the endometrial lining right this still this chorionic villus are trying to rupturing okay they are trying to rupturing and this rupture region this rupture region of the endometrium is called it is forming the lacuna or the space okay it is forming the space here is the space this lacuna get formed forming a lacuna system around this okay since i told you last okay so what is here here is this blood vessel get ruptured because this chorion get uh, this chorionic villi pro proceeds and rupture this and the blood it is draining out okay this blood is draining out this all happens everywhere in this lacuna so the blood the oxygenated blood is coming inside inside the blood it is coming inside and whatever the deoxygenated blood which is goes out by this way so the blood flow from here to here and deoxygenated blood which is goes out from here right so this is called as utero placental circulation okay so this is the uterus and this is the placenta so it is named as utero placental placental circulation utero placental circulation how it get formed you understood everyone so chorionic villus goes deep and deep chorionic villus goes deep and deep everywhere it goes deep and deep from every side okay and try to rupture it try to rupture it and tries to form a these are the chorionic villi okay these are the chorionic villi hmm? this chorionic villi is nothing but this chorion is from the embryo right this is from the embryo so this chorionic villus is a part of embryonal placenta it is a part of embryonal placenta right so there are two type of placenta one is maternal placenta and one is embryonal placenta okay the part of placenta which is derived from the embryo it is from the chorion it is from the chorion so it is named as the chorionic placenta okay chorionic placenta is the fetal placenta so everyone is clear with the concept what yeah i am just mentioning this chorion is rupturing the chorion is the outermost extra embryonic membrane the chorion is the outermost extra embryonic membrane and this extra embryonic membrane is from it is from uh, the embryo it is formed from the embryo okay it is a part of the embryo so it is from the embryo so it is called as a embryonal placenta so the placenta it is of two type embryonal placenta okay and the another one is a mother placenta so embryonal placenta is derived from the chorion chorionic villus villi it is derived from the chorionic villus right and then the next one is the uterine placenta the another one is the uterine placenta as you know these are the blood vessels okay these are the blood vessels here present in a uterus present in a uterus so it is named as a 
uterine placenta. Clear? Uterine placenta. Mother placenta is the uterine placenta. Uterine part. Okay. Mother placenta is a part of uterus. So it is a uterine part. Right? So maternal placenta and the maternal placenta and the embryonal placenta. Right? These two. So it is combinedly called as a hemochorial placenta. It is called as a hemo. Hemochorial placenta. In human, the placenta is a hemo, hemochorial placenta. In case of human, it is the placenta is a hemochorial. Why it is named as hemochorial? Because the, from the uterine part, it is taking a blood, right? So hemo means blood. And a part of chorion, chorion, okay? Which is from the uh, fetus, growing fetus, right? So it is named as a hemochorial placenta in case of human. So this is all about the placenta formation in a human. This placenta is a flat disc-like structure. And this flat disc-like structure, Hmm. from which this is the flat disk-like structure from which take one two arterioles are coming and one big venule is coming hmm. these are highly twisted one this is highly twisted and having a covering around it having a tubular covering around it and it is connected to the to the belly region of the embryo so this is the growing fetus and to this it is attached so this is the placenta and from this placenta the nourishment is given to the embryo the nourishment is given to this embryo okay as you know uh, the corpus luteum is responsible for progesterone formation, right? This progesterone is responsible for pregnancy, okay, pregnancy bearing. Uh, but afterwards, as the placenta get formed, this placenta is tries to secrete the progesterone. Then, okay, uh, the cor uh, the corpus luteum degrades, and uh, then further on the. Uh, the placenta participate in a production of what? Progesterone. Okay. As the placenta get formed, further on the another hormone get formed. That is a SCG, human chorionic gonadotropic hormone. This SCG is uh, responsible for SCG is uh, showing the implantation. As you know, the syn cytotropoblast get formed. What the syn cytotropoblast get formed, that means the embryo is tried to embed into the endometrium. During that, it is said to be that the female is conceived now. And during that, only the syn cytotropoblast uh, tries to secrete a hormone named as a SCG. And this SCG, a traces of SCG, comes into the blood as well as via circulating blood, it goes to the uh, into the urine also. And we are detecting the uh, pregnancy by doing uh, gravidex test. Okay, uh, UPT, urine pregnancy test, is done by detecting SCG in a urine. Okay, and that test is called as a gravidex test. Hmm? Uh, thus, the pregnancy can happen. And now, in the next lecture, we will study related with the pregnancy, the development of the pregnancy, the three prime minister we are going to study.